Hey, welcome to the Moral News for the week ending April 28, 2023. This is Moral News number nine. We're going to start off with, with uh, Mr. Beanie. We're going to start off with the Pope. And uh, he is going to now allow women to vote in the next Synod meeting in October. Never been done before. Well, let's take a look. Pope Francis has decided to give women the right to vote at an upcoming meeting of bishops. It's an unprecedented change that reflects Francis's hope to give women greater decision-making responsibilities. For decades, women have demanded the right to vote at Synod, now the next of which is scheduled for October. So it's an interesting piece, isn't it? Uh, the, the, some people think that, you know, that the Roman Catholic Church is never going to cave into the LGBT agenda or uh, things that have to do with reshaping the power with uh, so-called feminism and all that. I've got a bridge to sell you. I do. I do. It's a great deal. Okay, let's go to the next item. So this is just a little, a little observation, cultural observation, coming from my home state here presently, the state of Michigan. And if you go down to the automobile manufacturing uh, center of the state down there, guess what? You'll find that we have a, a community. The mayor is an Arab American, and they've just been finished celebrating uh, Ramadan, an Islamic holiday, and and the city now gives people that off as a paid holiday, this uh, Eid. Take a look. On Friday, Dearborn became the first city in the country to offer Eid as a paid holiday for city workers. Priya Mann was there for those festivities. Well, this morning, the Eid brunch is a free event, and the city isn't turning anyone away. The mayor wanted a sense of how many people would attend, and he tells me within a few hours, more than 1,000 people had RSVP'd. How are you? Dearborn Mayor Abdullah Hamoud greeted a long line of families for the city's first ever Eid brunch. The mayor himself is Arab American and says this Eid brunch reflects the diversity in Dearborn. We, we try to teach them everything about our religion and our culture, so it's nice that they see more kids and more families doing it. And in the spirit of Ramadan and giving back, more than a dozen Dearborn restaurants and grocery stores donated all of the food here today. And of course, for everyone celebrating Eid Mubarak. In Dearborn, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. So I'm not really against Arab Americans who are respecting the rights of others uh, doing what they want to do. But uh, we do see an interesting piece here is as Christianity uh, declines and flatlines in, in so many ways, uh, what do we have? We have, well, even in Minneapolis, I understand now that they are blasting Islamic prayers from the mosque over the loudspeakers into the city. So where are we? Where are you guys? Hey, Christians, what are you doing? Wake up. Wake up, man. Anyway, interesting piece. Uh, let's move on. Here's just another item from the Methodist Church meltdown over LGBTQ. A great divide between congregations. One in five United Methodist churches in the Holston Conference, which does include East Tennessee, will leave the denomination. Church leaders voted this past weekend to let 264 congregations disaffiliate. This is a happy moment for many here. In a somber vote, if you are in favor, the whole thing conference voted to let 264 churches leave the denomination. This motion has been approved. That represents about 31% of the total churches in this conference. Reverend Tim Jones says the debate largely boils down to LGBTQ issues. Currently, the Book of Discipline uh, states that um, practicing homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. That language could become more inclusive during the General Conference in 2024. The churches that are leaving tend to be more on the traditional side, and uh, they're just um, not having, not wanting to have the conversation anymore. We acknowledge that our inability to continue on the journey together in the same denomination is a sign of human brokenness. So I don't know what else there is really to say about that, but hundreds of congregations, um, thousands of the, the, the shifts that are happening in our world, in, in the Christian world, haven't, haven't been this way for, for a century and a half. We're, we're in a very tumultuous time, and most of it's over some of the same stuff. Kind of interesting, kind of important. Okay, let's go to this one, and this is uh, kind of a sad piece from Kenya over there in Africa. And uh, there was a cult leader, supposedly a Christian-y cult leader, and now there's a bunch of people who are dead. Let's take a look. 
Dozens of bodies have been exhumed in Kenya as part of an investigation into a suspected religious cult. The remains are thought to belong to followers of a Christian cult who believed they would go to heaven if they starved themselves to death. Police began exhuming the bodies on Friday near the coastal town of Malindi. The discovery of the mass graves is the latest chapter involving what police call the radicalized pastor, Paul McKenzie. On April 14, police rescued 15 members of the group, worshippers at the Good News International Church. At least four were found in an emaciated state and died while being rushed to hospital in a police rescue operation. Mackenzie, the leader of the church, was subsequently arrested following a tip-off that suggested the existence of shallow graves belonging to his followers. Now, what I found interesting here was the proposed solution to this, right? The solution is the we, we need a tyrant. We need a pope. <laughs> we need a pope. So the government's going to, we're going to make the government the pope and pass these laws here. And uh, we'll make sure everybody has a certificate that they're upstanding people and they're not a weird cult leader. And that'll solve the, the day for us. Take a look. Now, the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya is calling for the regulation of religion in Kenya and saying that there are gaps in the law on regulation of religious activities. The alliance has condemned the cultic activities allegedly spearheaded by controversial preacher Paul McKenzie, as Brian Mochirina reports. The revelation of atrocious activities in Shakahola, which has been linked to the death of over 90 people and a deadly cult, has left tongues waggling. On Tuesday, the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya came out strongly calling for the regulation of churches in Kenya with specific laws to regulate religious activities. Can we have a specialized law under which religious institutions covering uh, freedom of religion and belief uh, can be enshrined? Regulation of churches has been met with resistance from some quarters. In 2016, former Attorney General Gidu Muigai tabled his proposals on the matter, which poised that clerics submit a certificate of good conduct and their theological training certificates from an accredited theology institution. Religious organizations submit their constitution showing statement of their doctrine of faith. Any religious society in Kenya must have its constitution with programs, ministries, charitable activities and education activities undertaken by the religious society and details of persons coordinating these activities and that all religious societies must be registered and open to the registrar's inspection at any time. Religious institutions like ourselves have no mandate uh, to stop anybody from worshipping in the name that they wish to worship, but also we have no mandate if people become criminal and begin to commit crimes against humanity, do money laundering. In, in, in that case, then let the laws applicable in this country be applied. Today, both the Senate and the National Assembly adjourned their businesses of the day with motions brought to both floors of the House to discuss the horrors of Shakahola. We challenge ourselves to come up with laws that will see to it that no more Kenyans are radicalized. So just, just uh, rethink this. This isn't the solution. It's never the solution. You don't need more popes. You don't need more kings. You don't need uh, more Justin Trudeau type people. It's <laughs> no, don't go there. Don't do that. The, the King of Heaven, Jesus, if we will allow him to be the king, uh, many things will take an absolutely different and benevolent course. Well, that's all for this week. This is the moral news for the seven days ending on April 28. We'll see you in about next week if we're all still here. <laughs>